flashback. The year is 1066, so no cameras. We are doing portraits today. 38-year-old William landed on the shores of Britain. He landed here, at this place, called Pevensey, opposite France. His army had some 7,000 men. But what was he doing here? Trying to defeat Harold, the King of England. Spoiler alert, Harold lost. His army was defeated and he was killed in the Battle of Hastings. There was a new king in town. The 38-year-old conqueror William was crowned in this building on Christmas Day in the year 1066. Looks familiar? That's Westminster Abbey, the same church where King Charles got his crown today. Charles and William are separated by 34 generations. William was the first Norman king. Charles is the latest. Between them is a story of power, violence and ambition. A story of murdered relatives and looted colonies. You thought the Meghan Markle thing was a scandal? Wait till you hear this story. Back to the days with no internet. 34 years have passed since William conquered England. His third son is on the throne. He's also a William. William II. That's the English royal family for you. Big on power, low on creative names. Either way, William II is hunting in southern England one day. Disaster struck. His own noble killed him with an arrow. What's more, nobody even bothered to recover his body. It was an arrow maker who eventually found the dead king. Sounds fishy? Many historians agree. They point fingers at William's younger brother, Henry. He was a man in a hurry. He first secured the treasury in Winchester, then rushed to London and made himself king. Rumor is he had his elder brother killed. And the UK royal history is filled with such betrayals and murders. But as they say, what goes around comes around. Just ask Henry's great-grandson, King John, who took the throne in 1199, but he had a rival, his brother's son, named Arthur. Guess what King John did to his 16-year-old nephew-slash-rival? First, he ordered his eyes and genitals to be removed. It was so cruel, even the jailer refused. So the king took matters into his own hands. He personally murdered his nephew and threw his body into a river. It was a sign of things to come. Cut to the 15th century, one of the bloodiest chapters in English history was unfolding. It was called the War of Roses. Nothing rosy about it, though. It was 30 years of ruthless and barbaric civil war. There were two players, the House of Lancaster and the House of York. Their armies fought a famous battle in 1471. The Yorks won, but it was a bloodbath. Around 2,000 Lancastrian soldiers were slaughtered. That place is still called the Bloody Meadow. With the war done, the Yorks set about ruling. Their king was Edward IV, great general, bad sibling. He grew suspicious of his brother George, the Duke of Clarence. By now you know where this is going. Edward imprisoned his brother and had him killed. He was drowned in a pot of wine. Not my idea of a sweet death. But like I said, what goes around comes around. In 1483, Edward IV died. His successor, his 12-year-old son, also Edward. The young boy was heading to London when his uncle stopped him. He put Edward and his brother in the Tower of London. Nobody has seen them since. The uncle made himself king, but decades later, two skeletons were found in the tower. Did they belong to Edward and his brother? Your guess is as good as mine. The murderous uncle did not stay king for long. Just two years later, he lost the throne. If you think things have been violent so far, think again. What you just saw was the trailer. The movie is just beginning. Our murderous uncle's defeat signaled the start of a new reign, the House of Tudor. They had five monarchs, but one stands out, Henry VIII. Being his spouse was like playing Russian roulette. Very risky stuff. Henry divorced two of his wives and executed two more. In fact, he had a thing for executions. In 36 years, he executed around 57,000 people. That's around four people per day. Among them was Thomas Cromwell, great statesman, champion reformer, but a bad judge of character. Cromwell was Henry's chief minister. He did two very important jobs. One was to arrange marriages for the king. The second was to reform Christianity. Both things came back to haunt him. Henry being Henry had a problematic marriage with Cromwell's chosen bride. The result, Cromwell lost his head. Henry's daughter too had a vengeful streak, Elizabeth I. Her rivalry with Mary, the Queen of Scots, is legendary. Fun fact, Mary was also Elizabeth's cousin. Did not stop her from doing what she did though. Elizabeth imprisoned Mary for 18 and a half years. Then in 1587, she was executed. It took three swings of the axe to behead her. And you thought Game of Thrones was bad. Mary's story does not end here. Elizabeth died without children. Guess who succeeded her? The son of Mary, the same queen she executed. 
He took the throne in 1603. This was around the time when Britain started thinking about colonies. Soon the bloodlust would be exported worldwide. But more on that later. Around the mid 17th century, Charles I became king. Of Almighty God, to celebrate the solemnity of our royal coronation at Westminster. He was a delusional ruler. He thought he was appointed by God. When the parliament disagreed, he went to war. Charles was defeated in 1645 and executed three years later. That's right, a king was executed. And with that, Britain became a republic. No king, no royal family. But as they say, a dog's tail can never be straightened. In 1660, the royals returned. Charles II became king. After centuries of killing sons, brothers and nephews, they were ready for the next stage, colonialism. Close your eyes and pick any country on the globe. Chances are Britain invaded it. Around 90% of all countries were invaded by the British. They became the superpower of the 18th century. Their economic model, slavery. To be clear, Britain did not start the slave trade. That would be Portugal and Spain, but Britain perfected it. They transported around 3.4 million Africans to their colonies. 2.7 million reached alive, the rest perished. This was all done with royal approval. Remember Charles II? During his rule, the company of royal adventurers into Africa was set up. Nothing adventurous about it. This company shipped more slaves than any other. Its shareholders included royal family members. If Charles II institutionalized slavery, Charles III is carrying its burden. That's the current king. His direct ancestors bought slaves in Virginia. We are yet to hear an apology, though. Looking back, what do we make of this empire, of this throne? It was built on the blood of murdered relatives, on the sweat and blood of slaves and colonial subjects. By some accounts, 100 million Indians died prematurely because of British policy. 100 million Indians in just 40 years. They also took resources worth $45 trillion, which is 15 times Britain's current GDP. The entire world has had to pay for the royal family's mistakes. The First World War was such a case. Don't believe me? Take a look at these men. They look the same, don't they? Well, because they're all cousins. One is George V, King of England. The other is Tsar Nicholas II of Russia. The third is Kaiser Wilhelm II of Germany. All three were rulers during the First World War and all three were also cousins. Their rivalry ended with the death of 20 million people. This flashback is a reminder of the real history of the British throne, the blood they spilt, the innocents they executed and the lands they plundered. The throne soiled by cruelty and ruthlessness.